is a 45 year old female who came with a history of stone injury to the left eye one year back for which sclerocorneal tear repair was done on examination we could see zonular dehiscence from 5 to 7 o'clock position and there was absence of iris in the same clock hours so first using a 1 mm keratome the secondary incision is made at 5 o'clock position the globe is stabilized with the blade and with help of a 2.2 mm keratome the primary incision is made once this step is done intrahemoral trifen blue is injected following an air bubble and then a second air bubble is injected so as to paint the trifen blue properly onto the anterior lens capsule the dye is let to stay in the eye for a few seconds and then viscoelastic is injected into the anterior chamber to remove the dye and the air bubble so with the help of a bent cystotome rexus is initiated from the center as this case has some zonular dehiscence inferiorly rexus has to be done very carefully because if you are going to have a large rexus placing a ctr will be difficult so starting from the center a flap is raised towards the 5 o'clock position and gently rexus is completed the size of the rexus is around 6 mm in this case when you are operating on such cases there is always a tendency for the rexus run away at the site of zonular dehiscence so be careful when you are closer to the zonular dehiscence area so once the rexus is complete viscoelastic is removed from the anterior chamber by gently flushing bss into it and using a hydro cannula gentle hydro dissection and delineation is done make sure the nucleus does not collapse into the anterior chamber once the hydro dissection and delineation is completed viscoelastics must be injected at the site of the zonular dehiscence in order to prevent vitreous from coming into the anterior chamber i prefer to use viscoat in such cases as it acts both as a dispersive and cohesive viscoelastic following which i inject hpmc into the rest of the anterior chamber and using a long chopper as the second instrument phacomulsification is initiated first the cortex and epinucleus above the endonucleus is removed then the phaco probe is buried in the center and vertical chopping of the nucleus is done you can see the nucleus is a little bit hard though it is very small so i prefer to use a direct chop technique in traumatic cataracts with zonular dialysis it is always better to avoid doing a divide and conquer or stop and chop technique as they both can worsen the zonular dialysis the nucleus is chopped into multiple pieces and each piece is brought into the pupillary plane gently and emulsified care has to be taken while rotating the nuclear pieces within the bag as a little aggressive maneuver can cause worsening of the zonular dialysis and also lead to vitreous prolapse from the posterior segment of the eye it is very important to maintain the anterior chamber while phacomulsification because any little surge can cause a posterior capsular tear once the nucleus is emulsified and the epinucleus is being removed do not withdraw your phaco probe from the eye suddenly as this can lead to vitreous prolapse from the posterior segment so first remove your second instrument and then inject viscoelastic through the paracentesis fill the anterior chamber and gently withdraw your phaco probe being in foot pedal zero it's very important to have proper hydro dissection in such cases as the cortex can be very sticky and little aggressive maneuvering can result in worsening of the zonular dehiscence in this particular case you can see there is no cortex in the center of the posterior capsule so which is a good sign so using your hydro cannula filled with bss gently do a posterior capsular polishing which actually helps in separating the cortex from the posterior capsule and also at the equator as a result there won't be much stress on the zonules while removing the cortex always initiate the cortex wash in the areas where the zonules are very strong in this particular case cortex wash is initiated nasally first once the nasal cortex is removed superior cortex is removed and then the subincisional cortex is removed lastly cortex wash is done at the area of zonular dehiscence The key tip here is do not pull the cortex radially as it can worsen the zonular dialysis and also lead to vitreous disturbance instead always catch hold of the cortex and move your probe tangentially along the rexus margin so that we do not worsen the zonular damage so once the cortex wash is done always inject viscoelastic through your secondary incision and then remove your ia probe this is again to prevent vitreous disturbance posterior capsular polishing is done to remove all the remnant cortical fibers on the pc the anterior chamber is filled with hpmc and then a superior 1 mm paracentesis is made so as to facilitate the ctr insertion the ctr is held at 1/3 distance 
from the leading eyelet so as to have proper control while introducing the CTR. The leading eyelet is pointed vertically downwards so that it goes into the bag clearly. When you try to place the CTR in a little horizontal manner, sometimes you can lose that into the sulcus area. So make sure to keep your eyes focused on the rexis margin and the leading eyelet. Once the leading eyelet goes below the rexis margin, then it is easier to railroad the remaining part of the CTR into the bag. The trailing eyelet is hooked on using a Sinsky's hook and gently brought into the anterior chamber. And the second Sinsky's hook is introduced through the paracentesis on the left side to make sure the trailing eyelet also goes into the capsular bag. Following which, a single piece acrylic lens is injected into the bag. Gently, viscoelastic is removed from the anterior chamber and also from within the bag. Before removing the IA probe from the eye, the secondary incision on the left side is hydrated using BSS and a hydro cannula and gently the probe is withdrawn in order to prevent sudden collapse of the anterior chamber. All the incisions are then hydrated and intracameral moxifloxacin is injected. To summarize, while operating on traumatic cataracts, proper preoperative evaluation and proper history taking is very important. Always give preoperative oral glycerol or tablet tamox or intravenous mannitol to keep the vitreous dehydrated and prevent vitreous prolapse during surgery. Inject a dispersive viscoelastic at the site of zonular dehiscence in order to prevent vitreous prolapse into the anterior chamber. Proper staining of the anterior lens capsule is very important. Be careful while performing rexis at the site of zonular dialysis as there is a high chance of rexis extension. A perfect hydro dissection is required in such cases to have smoother cortex removal. Direct chopping of the nucleus is recommended in order to prevent worsening of the zonular dialysis. Always do a posterior capsular polishing in order to prevent worsening of the zonular dialysis. In the areas of strong zonules, pull the cortex radially and in the areas of zonular dehiscence, cortical wash must be done tangentially along the rexis margin. Always place a CTR in such cases. Keep your microscope and eyes focused on the rexis margin so as to ensure the CTR eyelets goes into the bag first. Do not collapse the anterior chamber at any point of surgery, especially while removing the probes, which can lead to vitreous disturbance. Always inject viscoelastic while removing the probes.